Hello. How is everybody? Let me get myself on here so I can see the comments. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday. This is Kim. You're uh, watching the Sewing Bee live. And um, we chat about anything, mostly sewing, of course, but um, we can chat about anything that's on your mind. We have a great time together. Um, about 3.15, I'll give some tips. And uh, yeah, bring your sewing questions, uh, anything that you'd like to talk about. When you're fighting to save oh, America's oh, oh, oh. family farms, every decision counts. That's why at Moy, we trust NetSuite for all our... Okay, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry. Okay, there we go. My apologies. How is everyone? Hi, Lisa. Nice to see you. Let's see. Good to see everybody. So what is new? Anybody making anything this weekend that they want to share about? I have not done any sewing this weekend. We did our family pictures yesterday um, out at a park and um, it was a lot of fun, but um, I came home really sore and tired because that was a lot of walking, but we had a great time. And I think we got some good pictures, we'll see. <laughs> of course, we're all photographers in my family, so we just passed a camera around and um, didn't hire anybody, but it was really fun. Hopefully I'll be able to show you some of those pictures. I wore my um, Chip Moto jacket that I made. I did a video on a while back. And yeah, just casual, but it was a lot of fun. Hi Rhonda, good to see you. Hi Ruth. Hi Jana, Becky. Well, thank you very much, Becky. I, I, uh, I like wearing navy, it's like my favorite. It's like my favorite neutral. You know, I don't really, I wear black, but I don't really like it that much, but I do love to wear navy. Hi Teresa, good to see you. Awesome. Well, jump on in here if you have any questions about anything. Um, I did the serger video a couple days ago, and I hope I didn't leave you guys with too many, uh, I hope I didn't leave you confused or anything. So if you have any questions about that, feel free. Um, one of the people who commented wants to see how I thread my old bear. So <laughs> I'm going to do that the beginning of part two, just so you can see how, uh, how, it, is to, uh, how it is to thread an old fashioned one. Um, all of them are different though, so it's not gonna be the same as yours unless you have this particular brand of Janome, but um, it might help just to kind of see, you know, the ins and outs of everything. So I am gonna show it and I might have to, to uh, have about 10 takes because the thing is very frustrating to sew from scratch but I or to thread from scratch but I will do it <laughs> hi Kay nice to see you hi Jenny welcome hi KB good to see you <laughs> so what what have been your weekend plans been um, anybody gone anywhere fun it's pandemic so we have to live vicariously through each other um the park the park was the only place i went yesterday um then I, we did go out to eat with our kids which was kind of fun um but today just church and then home <laughs> made a big pot of chili because it's cold it's one of the first cold rainy days that we've had hi rebecca glad you could join us South Carolina is so beautiful. I wish I was there right now. <laughs> Lisa's helping her neighbor make Roman shades for her kitchen. That's fun. I have a friend who wants me to help her with cornices. Um, that should be fun. I've never done cornices before. I did, oh, like, I can't see them, but there's a, a valence up there. I did when, we, when my husband first did this room. So um, that was easy peasy, but I don't know. Uh, Roman shades sound a little tough. <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. Nice to see you. Just up the road from me, Cheryl. I'm in Perrysburg. Oh, so you were following right along with my Juki, huh? 
Awesome. Hi, Terry. Oh, how fun. She made a pumpkin out of old canning rings. I'd like to see how you did that. That's amazing. Secret Siren went to Kenosha last Sunday. It was sad to see such a nice little town burn down. Oh, yeah. That's... I don't know what we all we just everybody needs to go back to kindergarten and learn how to get along don't you think it's like people I mean with all due respect you know the, everybody's issue is um, everybody's like stuck in their own whatever their issue is and I feel like we all just need to go back and like listen to each other and uh, understand that we kind of all want the same thing really we all want to be able to you know, love our families, and um, if we are, you know, we, we just all want the same things, I think, and I just think it's so sad, uh, all the violence and everything that's going on right now. I just don't know how to, you know, how we can stop it. You know, it's like, it just, we, it just breaks my heart, I guess is all I want to say. Chilly right now in South Carolina. Well, maybe I don't feel so bad then. <laughs> You need a lesson on the pattern app. Oh, okay. Well, Kate, did you watch my video? I did a whole video on that. Or maybe you didn't, maybe you did and you still don't know. Let me know if you saw it. I can put the link here. Um, I did a whole video on how I do my, um, how I do the pattern app. Hello from Colorado. Nice to see you. Nope. Oh. Do you hear the, the the Cleveland bell again? They're not even they're not even outside. <laughs> I still didn't tell them from last week. Uh, if you weren't here last week, my neighbor is a huge Cleveland fan, and so he's got this massive cowbell that he rings every time Cleveland does anything good. So it's um, cute and obnoxious at the same time. <laughs> they're really great people. So. Um, we'll put up with it because we really like them a lot. <laughs> my serger doesn't have air thread, so I got to thread the hard way. Finished my custom covers and painted the chair. Been ordering fabrics online for Christmas makes. Your chair looks amazing, Teresa. Uh, she sent me a picture of this chair that she recovered. It looks so great. And my husband, I uh, showed it to him and he's like, wow. <laughs> I think he was wondering if I was going to do something like that. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> looks so good. It's awesome. No problem, Katie. If you, if you have any questions after that, feel free to, you know, let me know. And do you need a, if you need a link, I can put it here for you. Um, but I did kind of follow through and put a, maybe a group of about 10 patterns in to the program so people could see how to do it. It's an obscure little program, but I really like it a lot. So tomorrow starts a very big Love Notion sale. I think I can say it now since they had it in their newsletter. I, I felt so bad. I was like, oh, I don't think they, somebody put it on the Facebook group. And I was like, I don't think we're supposed to know that. Everybody's supposed to know that yet because I'm an ambassador and they usually don't like you to announce things ahead of time. So I didn't want to get in trouble, but apparently they put it in the newsletter. So I guess it's out. Um, starts tomorrow, goes through uh, the 9th and it will be 40% off the entire site except for Glissando because that just released. Um, but it's a great time to stack up on your wish list. So this week I'm going to do Love Notions patterns and I will be giving one away. So um, I've got to figure out the details of how I'm going to do the giveaway. Um, but tomorrow, to go along with the surging that I just did, I'm going to go ahead tomorrow and I'm just going to surge a t-shirt so that everybody can see how I did it. I know it probably sounds a little boring to some people, but I really do think some people just need to see it on a garment. I got a lot of that in the comments, so I hope that will help some people. And um, I'm just going to show some classic tees that I made. I, I did post some of them on Love Notions, but um, just how I, I'm actually wearing one of them. Um, I like positive messages uh, for myself <laughs> during the 
week when I'm just home is my favorite go-to thing. Um, it just helps to like wear something that is positive. And then when you start feeling like you watch the news and it's just nice to be able to remember something positive. <laughs> Yeah, I think they did post it on the Love Notion site, but that I didn't see that before I saw it on the Facebook group, and I didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> and not that they would ever do anything to me. They're great people. Agreed, Jane. Yes, I remember when that book came out, Everything You Always Want to Know You, uh, you Learned in Kindergarten. We need that right now. It's like... Mr. Rogers, we need Mr. Rogers because, I don't know, people just, like, if everybody would just think a little bit about the other person and what they might have gone through and, you know, um, some of these terrible, devastating things and there's, like, you know, there's no explaining them away, really, but you just, you just have to know that there's something better and bigger and, um that really love is the only way to overcome those things. Um, just, it breaks my heart. Every time I watch the news, I just get heartbroken. So I wear my little t-shirts and remind myself that God's in control. <laughs> serger first, huh? <laughs> yes, I would recommend a serger over a cover stitch. A cover stitch has one purpose, really. I mean, you can use it for a couple different things, but Basically, it sews, you know, a double line or triple line of stitching um, for like a hem or top stitching, that kind of thing. So if you, like, it really doesn't sew seams. It can baste because, like, if you just do a single line on a cover stitch, it's like a chain stitch and you can just pull it right out. So it's really nice for basting. Um, but if you make underwear, if you make a lot of knits, it really gives a professional finish and the most important part about that is that it maintains a, the stretch of the fabric. So if you have a hem at the bottom of a t-shirt, um, the cover stitch will keep the, the stretch in the fabric. So um, versus doing, uh, even the double needle sometimes doesn't really, sometimes I'm not sure if it's the tension thing or what, but it doesn't do near as well as the cover stitch. So, but, it is worth having if you do a lot of that kind of stuff, but it doesn't replace a serger at all. A serger is way more useful. Hi, Kim. Nice to see you. Hi, Alberta. Let's see. Just got your, just got your first serger. Awesome, KB. All right, I'm going to make a t-shirt tomorrow uh, um, while you watch. <laughs> I'm going to do a uh, record a video, um, part two of the Serger series, and um, I'm going to show you some stitches. But first, I'm going to just sew up a t-shirt. It's so quick. I won't show like the pressing and all that, but I will show you every bit of serging that I do. And I may show you the cover stitch too, the, so that you can see the difference between the two machines. And um, hopefully that will help some people. Um, and then you can see how fast the Classic T goes together because I'm doing that to sort of promote the Classic T for Love and Oceans for their sale. And um, I can show you some that I've made and some that I plan to make and where do I get the neat cut files for um, my t-shirts that I use on my Cricut. Um, this one I got from Design Bundles. Net. And um, there are a lot of places that you can get cut files that are really cute. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun to do that. And then it's a positive message all day long. I did a t-shirt so long before, but I didn't do it on the serger. Um, it was, I think, the second garment I did in Friday Sewing School. I wanted to show people that you really could do knits on a regular sewing machine. But I also never showed you how I do it on the serger, so um, I will show you that tomorrow. And I won't repeat how I, you know, do the quarter and eighth on the neckband. I'll just refer people to that video that I just did on, net, on neck 
bands. I'm, I can't say knit neck band. It just doesn't want to come out right. Anyway, I will refer you to that neck band video that I did, but um, I will show you how I, how I surge and um, how it, you know, how it goes. Did you like it, Anne? Did you like the cover stitch? I was not sure I wanted one. And then I did see one at the expos, you know, going to different expos. And I decided that I didn't want to spend a lot because it really does only have one purpose. So I bought just the, the cheapest little brother one. And it's uh, the 2340 CV, I think. And at the time, it was like $300, just about, just over. It was on sale at Joann's, and um, it was free shipping and everything. And it's really nice. I mean, it wasn't very much money, but it it's just goes, goes and goes. <laughs> it's got one purpose, but it does that really well. So I like that cover stitch a lot. Um, I don't see myself upgrading that anytime soon because it's really nice. Oh, let's see. You have trouble getting neck bands even on a consistent basis. Yeah, I think keep practicing, Lisa. If you, if you didn't watch my knit neck band video, watch that because I showed you how you do, you do it in fourths, but then if you really want to just kind of hone your technique and, you know, get used to the way that feels is to do it in eighths and then you got a lot more control um, over, you know, you don't have this far to like ease it and then also when you're going around the corner you don't want to stretch the shirt you just want to stretch the neckband so if you stretch both that's when you're going to get puckers and it'll come out uneven so if you just stretch the band and not the shirt and you know divide it into eights it's pretty foolproof to do it that way but um and then it helps you kind of get the feel of it and then um you're able to do it you know, I don't have to do it in eights anymore, but I did. That's how I started out uh, way back when, when I was doing knit neck, knit neck bands. <laughs> anyway, this should be a blooper reel from that. I don't know. I've, every single time I've done a video about neck bands, I do that. I can't say it. Hi, Brenda. Thank you for the coffee. I got the coffee this morning from Brenda. Thank you so much. That was awesome. I appreciate you guys so much. Hi, Jana. Hi, Secret Siren. <laughs> nice to see you. Tony. Kathy Ann. Hi. Oh, good. I'm glad it helped. Hi, hi, Danita. Nice to see you. Montana. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you as well. I, I couldn't do this without people encouraging and, you know, making it feel worth it. If I was just doing it to, you know, and no one was watching, it would be pretty boring. So thank you so much for, you know, your encouragement and constant, um, you know, just care. I, I thank you, really. I feel like I have another family in this sewing world. So thank you so much. Fiddle to switch. <laughs> yeah. Fiddly, yeah, it, it's um, the cover stitch serger combos. Everybody who's had one says don't. So I would I would get a separate one because you have to, you know how bad it is to, to thread a serger. I mean, it's not that hard, you know, with an air thread, but it's still like cumbersome to take this thread off and put that thread on. And so if you have to switch everything around and including threading and thread and all that, um, it, it just wouldn't be worth it to me. I would just rather have a, I'd rather have a cheaper separate one than one that could do both. The fourth spool, which on the, uh, the left needle spool or the, all the way to the, the lo lower looper. You've been trying all morning. The lower looper is the toughest one, for sure. All 
Like Teresa says it's cumbersome to switch. Yep, that's what I've heard from a lot of people. <laughs> Tony says, if I had an overlocker, I would welcome seeing someone work through a make from start to finish. And that's what I was kind of thinking we would do with the t-shirt. It's a quick garment, but you know, I don't want to, I guess I don't want to bore people with doing a big project, but at least show how you can use it in garment sewing. Creative Grammy. You know, I'm a Grammy too. My grandkids call me Grammy. <laughs> I have a baby blocks, baby lock serger cover stitch, but I suggest getting separate machines. Takes too long to switch back and forth. I've heard that. See, there's like three people in just in this chat that have said that, and I've had other friends tell me that. So I didn't even consider one. Um, I wanted the air threading. That's the biggest thing that I wanted when I bought my new serger. And so the Juki um, was rated higher than the Janome, believe it or not, but it was. And so I went with the Juki. Um, I'm usually Janome all the way. Um, but I did hear that some of their cover stitch and um, their cover stitches can skip threads or skip stitches. And um, I've heard that their sergers aren't as good as the sewing machines. So I just went with Juki and I love it. It was right around, well, it's, I think it's normally, you can get it for like $12.99, but I got it from my dealer who I bought this from and I got both, and it was only $9.99. So that was a really good deal that I got. Hanging out in the studio making corduroy overalls. Oh, awesome, Mary. What, what pattern? Lisa? That's a great idea to get Walmart bundles, and they have a lot of them right now. Um, I got, I put this here because I was going to show you guys. This is from Walmart. It's like double brush poly and I didn't open it yet, but it's really nice. Um, three yards for $6 it was. So I think it's really pretty. So I buy these for pattern tests and stuff because, um, you know, I never want it like the first time I do a pattern test. I don't ever want to just use something cut into the really really good stuff but this um i don't know this is pretty good but um that's what i got this for um, walmart had a lot of this kind of stuff the other day so you might try your walmart if you're wanting some fabric to practice on or if you i mean that's nice enough to actually make into a really nice garment too i'm not saying that it's not nice enough for that but you feel a little bit better cutting into something that you only paid a couple dollars for um, than cutting into really good fabric when you do a pattern test because, you know, by design, pattern tests are not going to be the final thing, so. Brenda worked at a sewing factory with only three thread. I never used my fourth thread. Okay. Decided to try. Now she's not sewing right. Oh, which, which, um, uh, which serger do you have, Brenda? Well, Creative Grammy has the Juki as well. I've heard good things about the Bernina serger, but I've never sewn on one. Um, usually Bernina things are always pretty good, but um, Joy, Joy Bernhardt, uh, she's another YouTube um, person. She, uh, she uses um, Bernina's, I think. You might see if she has any videos on, on that. Hmm. Wow. Her, Katie's Walmart doesn't have good fabric deals. They, ours does, but you got to get there right when you put them out because they go really fast. I think a lot of people are onto their cheap fabric. <laughs> I do go there to get anything that I, like, Halloween costumes and that kind of stuff. Um, it's a one-time wear, you know, so I, I go there and I get the $2 cotton. Um, I don't, I don't get the really good stuff for that.
good. So Donetta has a, bur a burnet. That's right, they call those burnet. Nice. So I'm going to do the classic tea this week, and then I'm going to do I'm going to do a whole week of love notion patterns. Um, I think I may do a couple kids patterns. Um, I might do. Uh, I don't know. I've got to think of what I what all I need. I'm going to try and kill some kill some birds with two stones or kill two birds with one stone and um, make some of what I'm making this week in Love Notions be Christmas things. <laughs> so um, so you can uh, look forward to seeing that um, my Christmas list come together. I've got one thing done so far, um, but I have a lot pending, so I need to get going on it. Huh. Well, you know, don't those singers have five threads, some of them? Just, I thought they had five. I could be wrong. You can't get Bernina in Canada? Is that what you're saying, Ann? Huh. Okay. I don't know. I, I thought I saw some that have five spools, but I, I always wondered what the fifth one was because... The only sergers I've ever used or or even seen it used had four, either three or four. So, Teresa, what's the fifth um, thread for then? Is it for three? Is it for three lines of stitching, or is there another looper? Oh, it has a cover. Okay, gotcha. It does cover stitch. That would make sense. That's why some of those um, singers that do both have five then. Okay, that makes sense. So. There are three needles and two loopers. Okay, cool. So you could, um, you could with yours, you could probably do some of that um, reverse cover stitch it's really cool. Um, if you want some detail, you can put matching thread in the loopers and then do, you stitch from, you know, from up the wrong side, basically. So you get the looper threads on the outside and it can be like a cute little decoration. Um, a lot of athletic wear has that in ready to wear, um, but you can use that. Um, you can use your cover stitch for that too. And the one I have, even this cheap little one, actually has four thread capability. Um, but I, I never, I've never threaded the four thread. But I think if I did that, I would though. A five thread safety stitch. Interesting. Hmm. I love learning things from you guys because you know, it's a that. That's to me is the best part of the sewing community is that, you know, we all learn from each other. Like, um, yeah, I love that. I love that we are always, always learning, never stops. <laughs> the only time when I'm going to stop learning things is when I'm dead. And then I won't have to because I'll be in heaven where everything is great. <laughs> I don't think you don't require a cover stitch machine for athletic wear, but it sure does make it nice. Um, cover stitch, they, what they do is they do that decorative stuff times. And I think it has a purpose to kind of keep the threads down or whatever. But um, you can use a regular sewing machine and make athletic wear. You just have to make sure you use stitches that stretch. Remember that the key to knits is knowing when to stretch, when not to stretch, and using a stitch that stretches with it. That's the key to knits. And sometimes you're stretching one piece and not the other. So that's, that's the key to the neck bands is that you're stretching the neck band, but you don't stretch the shirt. And it's so easy to just pull both of them. You don't want to do that. You want to take and have the neck band and you're kind of you're kind of pulling it around the 
around the, um, the edge, you know, taking the curve as you go and not stretching the shirt at all. And that really is what makes them stay down. And then you put a cardigan on and they get all, I'm seeing myself in here and my neckline looks all whopper jaw because <laughs> of my cardigan. <laughs> It's chilly today. I couldn't wear just a shirt today. Yes, it would be boring without learning. I think the cover stitches all do a chain stitch if you just use one needle. That's what I was told anyway. In my manual for the brother, it just says to use one needle and then it's a chain stitch. Hmm. Interesting. So that, um, is it Pam? So that's similar to what they use on jeans and stuff in the stores, I think, maybe, because they do some chain stitching on that. Could you do an overlock stitch? An overlock is just a serger. So um, when you hear overlocker, that's just the same, just the word they use for serger in other places than the US. So um, I don't know what you mean by an overlock stitch. A uh, serger is an overlocker. So in my first knit dress yesterday, ran out of thread top stitching the neck band. Oh, but very pleased with how your machine performed. Awesome. So what did you do? How did you solve the problem when you ran out of thread? I love to hear how people like run into a glitch and then how they fix it. I think that's what we learn from, from more than anything is we, we find a glitch and then, you know, we have to do something to fix it. Fold, then open it. Are you talking about, oh, you're talking about a flat lock stitch, Brenda? I think you're talking about a flat lock. Yeah, you have to fold it, serge it, and then you open it, and it looks like a, it's a flat lock stitch. And that's actually one of the stitches I'm going to show you how to do on the second part of serging. Cool. <laughs> that's awesome. So you can go get more thread. Cool. Yeah, I think Brenda was talking about flat lock. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I was so confused. I wanted to help you, but I didn't know what you meant. Yeah, you can flat lock on a serger, and it's just a matter of settings. And I'll show you that in my um, next serger video because that is, I want to show um, blind hemming, flat lock, gathers. Um, what was the other one? Blind hem, flat lock, gathers. There was one more. I've got it written down. <laughs> it's, it's Sunday afternoon. Um, ask any worship leader of a church how you are on Sunday afternoon. Brain gets to be mush after a whole morning of, you know, coordinating uh, two church services. <laughs> I'm like, Bleh! by Sunday afternoon. Um, it could look good on sportswear. It depends on where you put it, I think, on the sportswear. Um, might look nice on, um, you know, a join somewhere, like maybe I'm trying to think of where that might look good. Like um, you could do, although I wouldn't want it to be the only stitch you did because I don't know how really, really good a flat lock is for strength. But like if you did a, it on a raglan, that might be kind of cool. A, a, fell, a flat fell stitch is a completely different thing. You, t you do a, 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 a regular stitch and then you're folding them over once and over again and then sewing it down. Um, like what's on the side of jeans. That's a flat fell stitch. That's not the same as flat lock. <laughs> I haven't made that one, but that one, um, the idle idle what is it called the idle wind top idle idle wild yeah i haven't made that one yet but that looks really nice 
they have some really nice new patterns out. I need to do some. I haven't done theirs for a little while. <laughs> yes, I do. I, I t try not to do anything on Monday. Um, I do sewing videos, but really those are, that's my fun, you know. Um, I do work on the channel a little bit, but I don't do anything else. I do very little on Mondays. <laughs> I kind of just, you know, I watch movies and put my feet up. and um, But I do sew and maybe, you know, film a video. Sometimes I don't get one done on Monday. Sometimes I don't do it till Tuesday or Wednesday. Or like this week, it didn't end up getting uploaded until Friday. So, <laughs> but I try. <laughs> I don't think it would be in place of a cover stitch. Um, a flat lock wouldn't, I don't think it would be, uh, it's not something you can uh, do in place of a cover stitch, I don't think. Um, really, jeans, jean jackets, um, that's about the only, I can't think of any other time you would do flat veld. Some like maybe some menswear um, like a, maybe a vest or something like that, but, um, not really too much on other clothes besides jeans or denim or canvas, um, possibly on like some canvas tote bags and things like that. You might do it. Um, anyway, well, it is ooh, 324. I have tip for you. And this is, um, this is something that as our pandemic goes away we'll be using more but um, a lot of people are going to fabric outlets lately and we're all like loving it and it's wonderful because we go there and we get our fix on fabric shopping and only have to go out once you know so that's a good thing for the t as far as the pandemic goes but I wanted to share with you how I get a list together before I go, not knowing what I'm going to find. Because I am the kind of person that gets inspired by fabric. Like fabric is what makes me think, oh, I could make this with that. So um, I'm not one who goes, I want to make this. And then I go out, set out to find pattern for, or fabric for that thing. So when I go to the, um, when I go to the, the uh, ex not expos, when I go to the outlets, I have a little document in my phone that says how much I need roughly for what type of garment. So if it's a shirt, I'll need two yards, maybe one and a half if it's no sleeves or short sleeves. Um, if it's a dress, I try to get three, three and a half, a maxi four, um, pants two and a half. So I just like write those down. And if you sew for more than just you, write that down for the rest of your family. And then when you run across that fabric, you can, you know, know how much to get to, to make a dress, a shirt, a top, a tunic, you know, whatever. And then that way, uh, you don't have to bind yourself to, I bought that to make this, you know, cause I don't always know what I'm going to make with something. Um, but at least if I can narrow it down to um, either a shirt or a dress or pants, um, then I can figure out the pattern later. Um, if I don't know at all what I want to do with it, I usually buy three yards because you can do quite a bit with three yards. And then I end up with leftovers because I decide to do something that only took two yards. But then I've got great amount of stuff to pick from to make for my grandkids. So. Um, that's how I do it and I just wanted to give you that tip so if you just keep a document kind of like that in your phone and you run across fabric um, rather than trying to figure out what pattern you might want and all that just think on in general terms and I think it'll be a lot easier for you to um, you know pick out things and uh, it's a little less I don't know I, I, do, I go shopping then in my stash. When I'm going to make a top, okay, I'm going to go look and see what I have that I have two and a half yards of or whatever. And that, I think, works really well. So that's my tip. I don't know if that'll help anybody, but um, I think, you know, I think having that in my phone has really helped me 
Um, the other thing I did, I didn't do it this time because this past time was, it was, I was going there for the sole purpose of getting fabric to make Christmas gifts. So I kind of had, you know, shirt, top, dress for whoever I'm sewing for. Um, so I didn't, I didn't necessarily have, um, you know, it uh, wasn't for me. So, um, but last time when I was going and I was thinking of me, um, I also took uh, my colors with me. So I know that I'm a warm spring, which, you know, I'm not big into that color theory, but I do know that I like navy and I like mustard yellow and I like, you know, pink and I like teal. So I got together sort of a five or six colors and decided that I was going to kind of stick to that color family um, when I went shopping for anything for me for that season and that helped a lot because you end up like do I want this or do I want this which one do I want and then my husband just rolls his eyes and says oh just get it you know <laughs> so um, so it was it's helpful if you can take some color swatches with you too just uh, you can go to Pantone and you know copy little squares and make yourself a little graphic of the colors and it's a really nice way to sort of hone down into what you want. Hope that made sense. Good Kate. That's uh, that's what I do every time I go because I would just the first couple times I went I was so overwhelmed and I didn't really know what to buy what not to buy and um, then I just started like honing down, you know, I know I'm gonna, I know I'll be able to get good knits there that have, you know, prints. So I, I know that I can get that for my granddaughters there or whatever. So I just, you know, I just go, you know, I just go and see what I see and, and I just get inspired by the fabric. And if, if a fabric jumps out and says, you know, this is for, you know, Norma, my sister-in-law, or whoever. You know, if the, if the fabric just tells me it's for some, that person, you know, then I just go, well, what would I make a top, a cardigan, a, a dress, you know? And then I just go, well, you know, maybe I don't even know, but I'll get three yards because then I'll have enough to make something for somebody else if, it's, if I don't make that. So that's how I do it. Good, good answer, Anna. I'm sorry, I kind of left that without an answer. <laughs> Heavy duty sewing machines. I want one that will sew through several layers without hesitation. You want a mechanical one. You want one. Um, I don't know if that Singer one's very good. Um, I know Janome makes one, and I know I can tell you I have a Janome um, Combi DX, is what it was called. It's no computer. It had the serger on one side, but you know, ignoring that, it was a, it is, I still have it, a fantastic machine. I mean, it'll go through anything. And when I'm doing a lot of jeans or anything, I always get that out. I always do my top stitching jeans on that machine because it just, like, it'll just go, like, it'll just go through anything. Um, and most machines will go through quite a bit because. Um, if you use a hump jumper, <laughs> I know I always, I always bring up the hump jumper, but it's like my best friend. But if you get the jean one, let me see. So this is a special hump jumper for jeans. So it's really thick. So you can stick that like, you know, right up against the fabric so that the presser foot stays level. If the presser foot's level and you have a good heavy duty needle, your machine should go through anything, whether it's heavy duty, you know, or not. I mean, most, I haven't really had a machine that wouldn't do that. So um, I know this one does. I know my old Janome does. And even that Magnolia that I had that was, you know, not that expensive would go through jeans with no problem as long as I had. You know, what happens is the presser foot ends up, I don't know if you can see this, but it ends up at an angle like this. 
I can't go forward because, you know, this, there's this bulk here and it's like this and it's just push, push, push. So it just grind, grind, grind. And then if you level it out, it'll just go over top. I mean, it still might hesitate a little bit, but it'll go. So, um, yeah, this is Gina Majig. This is called, I think it's a hump jumper, but it's made for jeans. Yes, me too. <laughs> I agree, Kate. Oh, good, Nikki. I'm glad you joined us so much. Yes, fabric jumps out at me too, Kate. <laughs> You're in Jerusalem? Oh, bless your heart. I would love to visit there someday. That's kind of on my bucket list. I want to go to the Holy Land someday. Um... Just see, you know, see where Jesus walked. And, um, yeah, I would love to go there. Take your pattern pieces, lay them out on a bed. Yeah, that's a great idea, Ann. Um, same thing with a table, just knowing how. Like, my table is um, about 47 by... 20, I guess, I think it's, th yeah, I think it's 24 by 47, so I can do that, um, I can lay that out pretty, pretty well, um, sometimes I might have to extend it out a little bit if it's 60 wide fabric, though, but, yeah, I hope that, uh, I know that Janome has a heavy duty machine and Singer does, I don't know if anyone else has just one that's, you know, no frills, just a workhorse. Um, I think Singer's is not very expensive, too. I don't know about Janome's. It might be expensive because it'll be, but it'll be quality. It'll be real quality. So. Anybody sewing for Christmas? I need an idea. You guys can help me out here. I need an idea of a, just a, okay, last year, I have kids on my list that I just make something little for. So like last year I did these crayon roll-ups that were on Made for Mermaids. Um, they had the pattern. And um, so I did that. And then I did, uh, for the older girl, I did a pencil pouch and put her name on it. And I put colored pencils in there. And then I made her a journal, um, which I have a video on how to do that if you guys want to. It's in the Christmas ones from last year. So I need something little like that this year, not the same thing. So if anybody can think of anything small like that, that would be good for like a 11, 12 year old girl. Uh, and, and then there's some younger kids too. Younger ones are easier <laughs> to find something that they're excited about, but the 11, 12 year olds, it's kind of hard. Um, I, with her, her, she has older brothers, and these are our pastor's kids, and, and I love them so much. And, you know, I've watched them grow up ever since they were little. And um, we just like to give them something every year, but not anything huge, just something either that we make or... Um, so the boys, I've started just getting, you know, like Gildan T-shirts and putting something on them with my... Well, I, had, I just switched from cr silhouette to cricket. But on my silhouette, I would make them something like that, something funny or whatever. But um, I don't know if I'll have to. But now she's 11, and so I feel like she's getting too big for little kid things. So I need to figure out <laughs> something for her and for some other kids that are right around that same age. So if you have any ideas, I am open. Ooh. Bulk, bulk koozies would be great for like a, a neighbor or a housewarming, I mean not a housewarming, a hostess gift. That'd be great. Danita's going to make a, a quilt. Ooh, that's nice. That's a little more than, I mean, I just need it to be something quick for the kids. Um, I love to do quilts, but um, that would be... If I did that for all those little gifts, I'd be, I'd never leave the room. 
<laughs> You're making a bag today. Oh, awesome. Which bag pattern, Brenda? Headband scrunchies. Good idea. That is a great idea. I did the zip up bag last year and had her name on it. And then I put pencils in it. So, um, but I could do, like I could get her a little brush and make a little bag and put scrunchies in it or something. Yeah, I'm hoping we won't need masks by December. <laughs> I know that's probably not the case. Seems like it's just getting, you know, resurging. It doesn't seem like it's going away anytime soon. So, um, yeah. Your guild has, for the gators, the, yeah. A lot of the kids uh, at church are wearing those, yeah. Scrunchies. November, December. Uh, I hope he's wrong. <laughs> she said her cardiologist told her that we're, um, they expect another surge in November, December. Oh boy, I sure hope not. <laughs> cool beanie hats and scarves. That's cool. A gym bag. I might make her a little purse, like a little hipster. Um, I bought some really cool um, fake leather at Zinks. Hang on, let me grab that. I'll show you. So this is super nice vinyl, like fake leather that I got. And um, I got blue and navy and this pink. And I was going to make bags for my granddaughters, and I, but I could just make another bag. Oops, sorry, I just hit my microphone. That probably sounded really loud. Sorry about that. Um, that's maybe an idea because, I mean, I have way more than what I'll need for a bag. <laughs> So, yeah, that's a really good idea. I thought of that when I saw Brenda said she's making a bag today. <laughs> I think that, you know, like an 11-year-old girl would love a pink one, don't you? Like this color. Um, I like the navy myself. I love navy. Yeah, I I don't have a gator, but they look like they'd be comfortable and practical, especially winter time because it could be like a cowl neck and just pull it up. Yeah, Kathy, I think you're probably right. The cowbell, I didn't tell them yet because I haven't seen them outside. And they rang it once when I first got online today. I don't know if you were here yet, but yeah. Cleveland must not have done anything else good since then, but um, yeah, I haven't seen him, so I was going to kid him about it, but they've been kind of gone this week, so they're really sweet people. <laughs> yeah, every, don't, it, don't you think that every girl likes bags, like whether it's a tote bag or a purse? I don't know. I have a whole like closet full of bags. And Kevin goes, my husband, well, he'll just roll his eyes and say, man, you have so many bags. But then, but then we're going somewhere. We've got all this little stuff. And I go upstairs and I come down with just the right bag for it. And he always is so, oh, that's, that's great. That'll work great. I'm like, well, that's why I have so many bags, honey. <laughs> that's a great idea too, Kath, or Cindy. Backpack for sleepovers. Awesome. Ooh, a Kindle or a tablet. Oh, that's a great idea, Danita. I have a pattern for that too. Mm. 
Oh, that's a great idea. I don't think she has a phone. Um, she's a pastor's kid, and I don't see him letting her have a phone at this point at, at um, age 11. I th think that her brother has a phone, but I don't think, I don't think she'll have one for a while. But my, um, my granddaughters don't have them either. They have one cell phone that is like for the house. Because um, now that they're older, my daughter will, you know, like leave for a little while maybe and come back. And now they have a cell phone there just for safety, you know. But they're not really like allowed to just, you know, call people on it and stuff. If they need a text, they text on Wi-Fi with their iPads. They all have iPads, so. Yes, agreed. Too many phones. <laughs> That's one thing I, you know, I love them and I hate them at the same time. So, where would we be without them though, right? Mine is actually filming the video right now, so. <laughs> That's awesome, Teresa. The, the perfect gift for the person who has everything is something to put it in. I <laughs> love that. That is great. Yes, Kim, we are gatherers. <laughs> you wouldn't believe all the bags I have. And I probably, I still want more. I was thinking, mm, with the leftovers, I could make myself a purse. <laughs> I need a new wallet, so maybe I'll make a wallet. That's a great quote, Teresa. <laughs> That's a good idea, too, or music. Um, my um, oldest granddaughter is amazing on the piano, but she already has the tote bag for that. I think somebody made her a, a tote bag with a music note or something, one of her friends. So I have a question for you guys. Um, I have an idea for a video, but I want to know if it's something you think that anybody would want to do. So my husband made me this four by six foot uh, pegboard that you guys have, I think you've seen in videos before. And um, I want a second one, a little smaller. So he did a really cool thing with um, like making almost like a picture frame around it. And uh, I thought it might be cool when he makes that to film him doing that and show how he, you know, did the corner mitering and everything and, and then hung it, how far to hang it from the wall so you can put the pegboard things in there. And um, I thought maybe some people might like that for a video for their room. But let me know if you think people would be interested. <laughs> there you go, Barbara. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I have the necessary collect wallet pattern that I've been wanting to do forever. And I've been wanting to do a video on it forever, but I haven't done it. So maybe we should do that. It's a great, I, I need to do that necessary clutch wallet looks like the best pattern. It just has a place for everything and small enough to throw, you know, over your shoulder and just go. Yeah, I need to do that. Yeah, I think I, um, I think that people, it might be good for your husbands even more than, uh, you know, us girls. But I'll, I think I'll, I'll get him to do that while he's off. <laughs> better, I better act fast because he's got a third interview somewhere this coming week. So um, we're hoping, we're hoping this one is the is the job so we'll see um, it's always like I always say that God always opens a door when he closes one but sometimes it feels a little bit like hell in the hallway <laughs> so we would like to get out of the hallway <laughs> so but it's all learning you know and we're just enjoying spending some time together before he goes back to work. Fluffy pillows or fluffy slippers. Awesome. <laughs> I 
All right. Hi, Dot. It does, it looks so nice. I wonder, I'll swing the camera so you guys can see. My room's a mess, but I'll swing the camera so you can see it. There it is. And it goes all the way down to the floor <laughs> and it's packed. And so I'm gonna have one put over there above the heat press there. So, yeah. So I love the way he did that. So I, I um, oops, I made that too long. I love the way he did that pegboard. I think that he did such a good job. He painted that all pink. And um, so the other one's gonna be just like it, but just smaller. Like it's gonna probably be two by two by four, I think, something like that. So anyway, so uh, anybody have anything big going on this week? Um, I'm going to be busy doing Love Notions videos this week for, uh, as an ambassador, I try to promote their sales as much as I can. And I will uh, be posting my affiliate link on the um, Facebook group. And it's also at the bottom of all my videos too. So. If you're so inclined, I know that, you know, nobody's, not a requirement, but if you're so inclined to use my affiliate link, that would be really appreciated. And, um, but anyway, they have just the best patterns. I mean, I found them, they were the first PDF pattern I ever did. Um, I was always doing the big four and then, um, I ran across the Sabrina Slims and I really liked the way they looked. So I made some pair of black Sabrina Slims and I still wear them to this day. I love them. And um, that was my first Love Notions pattern. And then I've just gone from there. I like, love them. <laughs> They're like my favorite. So I love the slipper idea too. I think that's a great idea. And oh, um, Made for Mermaids or Patterns for Pirates one have a, a slipper pattern, don't they? Do you know, do you remember where, who has them? I'll find it. <laughs> and another thing I'm gonna be sewing for Christmas is I'm gonna give my little two year, or she's not two, man, she's three already. Um, my little three year old granddaughter's getting finally old enough to play with a doll, so. Um, we're going to get her, not an American Girl doll, because I'm not going to spend that much, but um, maybe the one from Target, our generation. And, you know, I'm going to make some clothes for it. I, always, I did princess dolls for everybody one year, and I just, I made, um, I made Cinderella, Belle, um, Elsa. Who else did I do? Moana. Um the old Cinderella, the new Cinderella. And anyway, I made all these dolls and um, gave them as Christmas gifts one year as princess dolls. I restyled their hair to go, be like the princess. They really turned out great. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna do a princess for Dottie or if I'm going to just, um, if I'm just gonna do um, a doll and make a bunch of different kind of clothes for her <laughs> so and then my you know her brother he I don't know he might like a boy doll because they do play together a lot so I'll see how they feel about that if they think he'd like one and I might do it for both of them because he's five she's three and they just play together like two little cub bears are so cute together I lost the Did I lose you guys? Somebody type something because I'm not seeing the, the, your comments. Hmm. Hmm. 
I'm going to put a test comment here and see if I see that one. Yeah? Did I lose everybody? It says there's 73 people. Huh. I'm going to go out and come back in. I'm not seeing any of your comments, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, it says there's 63. All right, I'll find it. Can everybody see? Let me see. Hmm. Okay, I see you guys are commenting and I'm just not seeing them. Why do I have this? I don't want that. I'm not getting your comments. I'm so sorry. Hold on. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay, there we are. <laughs> you know, you guys could see me, but I couldn't, I didn't see anybody's comments. Kim, I think that I, I see your question here about the suede or leather. You could do it in a regular machine. Um, I would get a Teflon foot. If you ha don't, if you haven't seen one, they are. They're like this, just a Teflon foot made for um, slip or sticky things. So it kind of glides more over the fabric so um, that's what you get for that kind of thing vinyl leather um, pleather all the same that's a good idea I don't know if she's a reader but that's a good idea cool silicone dots Ah, that's awesome. That and that's a very that's a very good answer to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. These are great ideas. A needle for leather. Yeah. Yes, Sabrina Slims are just narrow leg pants. Is all. They're not for slim people because I wouldn't be wearing them if they were. <laughs> they're for, they're just a, a tapered leg cut. They actually make you look thinner. Um, if you, you wear a, a nice fitting pair of slim pants, it'll make you look a little thinner and taller. So um, I like the, the slim pants a lot, but um, you, it ha they have to fit well, though. You, you know, if they don't fit, if they're if you fit, look poured into them, not so much leggings or anything like that, but just slim tapered pants are really nice. My cardigan, this one, this is a blackwood cardigan um, from Helen's Closet. And um, I've made a ton of these. And this is Double Brush Poly uh, from Zinc's. I think from Zinc's last year. I wear this one all the time. It's just the right weight. It's not super, super heavy, but it's warm enough, you know, when it's chilly. Um, it's chilly outside. 
and I'm not getting your chats again. I wonder why. Huh. Oh, yes, I am. What size needles do I use in my serger? Um, right now, I think I have a 14 in there, or the 14s in there. Um, I think you can change them to just depending on your fabric. Um, the nice thing about the Juki is you use house re regular sewing machine needles. So you can put, you know, you can put jeans needles in there. You can put ballpoint needles in there. I think I have 14 ballpoint in there right now. 14 is a good sort of middle of the road. You know, it's, you can put a little bit thicker things in there, but um, not like jeans, but you can do fairly thick things in there. The needles are in wrong. Huh. That would definitely, definitely change it. How much time people pre uh, spend time pre spending preparing for and sewing each week? Some weeks I have a day, others one to two hours or none. Well, I don't know if I'm the normal, but since I have the channel and that, I sew every day and pretty much. And once in a while, if we have a busy weekend like this weekend, I didn't do any sewing. But um, I'm usually up here three or four hours every day. Um, in the morning and then I'll come up sometimes again after after dinner depending on what we've got going on so I'd say probably three to four hours a day for me I think about sewing every day <laughs> yeah I think about sewing when I'm not for sure um, anybody want to like alter people's clothes when they see people out? <laughs> I see people and all I can think of is I want to alter their pants. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Brenda. I, I need to, you know, I'm going to be, if I don't get going on the Christmas stuff, I've got one thing done, like I said, but if I don't get going, I'm going to be really busy in December. So I think I need to kind of knock some out. I think I'm going to be doing some kid patterns from Love Notions this week and um, definitely uh, think I'll be doing, might try to find a, a pattern that I haven't done from Love Notions yet, which aren't very many. So, but maybe I'll try and do a pattern review of something I haven't done yet. Um, I have glissandos ready to sew. I should probably maybe do those. And uh, yeah, so that should be fun. Well, y'all, it is four o'clock. So I'm going to probably wrap it up here. Did you have any questions about anything? I sure enjoy being with you guys and I know I'm not seeing everybody's comments here so I apologize if I haven't answered I'm not sure what's going on with my internet or whatever but thank you so much for all of your encouragement and um, I could not do this without all of you so thank you so much and I'll see you online tomorrow I'm gonna be putting up a video probably won't go up until like uh evening but it'll be i'll get it done <laughs> see now i've made myself accountable to you people <laughs> so <laughs> you're my accountability partners okay thank you guys so much you have a wonderful rest of your sunday and take care everybody stay safe bye bye